All right, good afternoon, Team Greeley. Hope everybody's having a great day. As you can see, I am wearing my cloth face covering, but as it stands right now, I am the only person in this room, so I will go ahead and take it off. That will make it easier for me to communicate with you over the next few minutes. Uh, what I wanted to do today is just kind of uh, put out a message to the workforce uh, via video. I think everybody's tracking. We've been doing near daily emails with updates as it relates to coronavirus. Uh, by the metrics that we can use, it seems that the videos are a little more popular than the, uh, than the emails that we've been sending out. So every once in a while, I'll try to just publish a message that we can share uh, just to make sure we're pushing as much information as we can um, on COVID-19. So really the information I've got today is just kind of reinforcing some points that we've already put out over the course of this week uh, just to drive them home and make sure everyone is tracking the same thing. So you saw I started the message with my cloth face covering on, so let's talk a little bit about those cloth face coverings. I think everybody's tracking on April 5th, this past Sunday, the Secretary of Defense put out a memo directing the use of face coverings um, for all individuals on DOD installation where the uh, social distancing cannot be maintained. So we've been pushing that across the garrison. I've kind of expanded on that a little bit uh, for the garrison workforce. Uh, starting yesterday, anybody coming into a USAG Fort Greeley building uh, should have had their face covering on their person and worn it while transiting in, through, and out of the building. The reasoning behind that really, let's take a building 501 as an example. Say I roll into work, uh, you know, I'm, I'm walking over to my office, potentially I turn a corner, I might run into somebody um, where I can't maintain that six feet of social distancing. So the face mask, again, another layer of protection uh, for people transiting in and out of the buildings. Additionally, starting today, we've mandated that face coverings will be worn uh, by all employees and patrons in those high traffic areas and customer service facilities on the garrison. Some examples being the troop store, uh, the commissary, the post office. So I would ask that everybody uh, kind of help, help those folks that run those facilities maintain that standard. Again, these, these rules apply across the board. Um, it's for civilian employees, military persons, family members, retirees, everyone. So please help us as we enforce that. And just kind of another underlier on the face mask. The point of it is not necessarily to protect yourself from others, but to protect others from you in case, heaven forbid, an asymptomatic person is out there. So please do what you can to support the community on that effort. Another piece that we've talked about this week, um, we've been trying to message to the community, is in regards to our uh, only confirmed positive COVID-19 case. So a bit of good news, uh, the employee is doing well, uh, which, is, which is great news across the board. The employee is also expecting to receive return to work clearance uh, starting towards the end of this week. So what that means for the community, you might see this person out and about uh, conducting normal routine business as early as Saturday. You might see this person in the office come Monday. Uh, what I would ask is that everybody be empathetic and protect the privacy of this person. If uh, the privacy of this person, if you do happen to know him or her, um, just remember, please, uh, integration reintegration is a part of COVID-19. So do what you can to support that person as. Uh, he or she comes back to uh, to normal life. And really just a, another important lesson, COVID-19 does not discriminate. It can affect anyone. So please keep that in mind um, as you work through your empathy and, and protecting that person's privacy. Wanted to highlight a couple of points on the medical side as far as the clinic goes. Uh, we've highlighted the new drive up capability for COVID testing at the Fort Greeley Clinic. Remember though, you can't just drive up and get tested. All of that must be done in close coordination uh, with the clinic staff. So I would ask that you call over ahead of time. If uh, Doc Richardson does determine that you need a test, they will provide you all the instructions you need to, uh, to do the test. Want to highlight some additional rules for the clinic that uh, we published but want to reinforce. The first, uh, kind of like the, the drive up testing, please call in advance before you show up 
uh, to the clinic for any reason, for medication, paperwork, etc. Please let them know you're coming um, to make sure that they are ready for you. Second thing, children under 12 are not permitted in the clinic unless they have an appointment, so please work closely with the staff on that. And lastly, please be prepared ahead of time. All clinic patrons will have their temperature screened at the door. Uh, the staff will also have hand sanitizer and masks on hand to provide for you for your use. Uh, the last thing I wanted to hit on the medical side is uh, myself and the deputy specifically have been fielding a lot of questions uh, across the workforce about what to do about specific COVID-19 cases. Say you know someone who was exposed to COVID-19 or you just returned from travel and you're not sure what to do. Let me remind you, we posted these multiple times on our Facebook page and version seven was posted, I think as of yesterday, April 8th. These flow charts are here for a reason. If you have any questions at all about what your specific situation is regarding to COVID-19, the first answer or the first response you're going to get from myself or the deputy or hopefully from your supervisor is refer to the flow charts. They're there to help you. So please reference them early and often. If you have any follow-up questions whatsoever, if you have any doubts whatsoever, remember, call public health. They've been in the knife fight uh, for COVID for the past few weeks now. They're your best resource for information. So again, follow the flow chart. Just to wrap it up here, I uh, want to thank everybody again uh, for your support throughout this process. It's been a tough few weeks. Everybody has responded brilliantly. Um, I, I just thank you for your professionalism, your resiliency and support. Uh, I'll put my general plugs in that I do uh, is, is, with every workforce message and every video message. Please, first thing, wash your hands early and often. Okay, that's your best protection against COVID-19. The second is to uh, make sure you're using your cloth face coverings, which is kind of a new piece of guidance. Um, remember your social distancing and remembering the face coverings aren't a, uh, aren't a replacement for social distancing. And lastly, if you're sick, if you're not feeling well, stay home, don't go out. Please do your best to protect yourself and to protect others, and that way we can protect the force. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna call my public affairs folks back in to end the message, but before they come in, I'm going to protect them from me so they can come in now and end this, and I've got my cloth, uh, or my disinfectant wipes handy. We're gonna sterilize everything. Thanks everybody for your support. Have a great day.